the earth Who compares to the glory Of a Savior, the King of love Who gave all dying for me Your ways I don't understand You're completely other To all else that I've seen and compared To you God I've wondered That I will sing my song Tell you God that
I'm dying thirsty, Lord, and I'm crying out for more. I know I can trust in your love. And in the darkness in the night, when I'm starving for the light, I know I can trust in your love. You keep, you keep no record of my sin. No, you don't. You don't remember all my shame oh, oh, oh. Your love fills every seas Your love fulfills my every need Your love is everything to me Your love is everything Your love fills every seas Your love fulfills my every need Your love is everything to me And I'm crying out for more Well, I know I can trust in your love And in the darkness in the night When I'm starving for the light Well, I know I can trust in your love You keep, you keep no record of my sin your promises I will not forget I won't forget your love I will not forget nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your love I will not I will not forget I won't forget your promises I will not forget I won't forget your love yeah. my every need your love is everything to me your love is everything your love feels every disease your love fulfills my every need your love is everything oh I won't forget your love I will not forget Nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your love I will not, I will not forget I won't forget your promises I will not forget I won't forget your love I will not forget Nothing is impossible I will not forget I won't forget your love, I won't forget your kindness and I won't forget your faithfulness I won't forget your provision for me That you're there when I'm in need Oh, and I won't forget your kindness And I won't forget your kindness I won't forget your kindness I won't forget you, Jesus, yeah. I won't forget your kindness. I won't forget you. Promise
Good afternoon, good morning everyone, good day, and welcome, I was glad, hey everybody, everybody, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Remember that? Anyway, it's good to be with everyone here in the room and those who are watching online. Uh, today is a very special day, every day is special, but today is extra, extra special because it's Baby Dedication Sunday, everyone. Yeah, we've got four babies today that we're dedicating. We may have a few others later on, but we have uh, four today. And so we'll make room for that to happen. But before we hand over to the worship team, shall we pray? Yeah, Would you like pray. to pray? Okay. That's a nice outfit, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Father, we just thank you so much that we're able to be together this morning, this afternoon. Uh, Lord, we thank you that, um, that you have ministering angels here, and especially because of the children, because there, there must be more this morning. And so, Father, we just thank you that, um, that you love us, that you love being with us, and we commit every detail, uh, every, everything, our worship, our heart worship. Uh, Lord, we just commit ourselves back to you that we'd be wholehearted uh, in our in our service in our love and especially in our loving one another uh, lord let your presence be felt by everyone here and those watching in jesus name amen amen take it away Sybil. i just want to invite everybody to stand if you can stand <clears throat> Feel free to worship, you know, move around. Um, if you have flags, go ahead and flag. There's space in the back, so uh, just be who you are in, in the presence of God. Amen. Oh, let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign We are here for you Let your breath come from heaven Fill our hearts with your life We are here for you We are here for you. One more time, let our praise. Let our praise be your welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. 
And let your breath come from heaven Fill our hearts with your life We are here for you We are here for you To you our hearts are open Nothing here is sitting You are our one desire To you alone are holy Only you are worthy God Let your fire fall down Let our shout be a anthem. You're now fill the skies. We are here for you. We are here for you. Oh. Let your word move in power. Let what's dead oh, come to life. So we are here for you, Jesus. We are here for you. Come on, we're gonna do what's two again. Let us shout. Let us shout. Be your anthem. Your renown. Fill the skies. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your word move in power. Let what death oh, come to life. Yes, we are here for you. Yes, we are here for you. To you our hearts are open. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one design. To you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God. Let your fire fall to you our hearts. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. Are our one design, and you alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love we welcome in this place we welcome you with praise we welcome you with praise almighty god of love we welcome in this place let every heart adore let every soul away Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. Let every heart adore. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. You welcome in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul awake. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. Oh, we welcome you, oh. Welcome you, oh. oh, we welcome you. 
Hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are a one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Yeah. Oh, we welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. We welcome in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul away. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. We welcome in this place. We see you break down every wall. We watch the giants fall. But fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. For you. cry, God, we praise you. We see you break down every wall. We watch the giants fall. Oh, fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on my side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We see you break down every wall, we watch the giants fall. Oh, we cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. We know. Let faith be a song that overcomes the rage and sea. Let faith be the song that comes to storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We see you break down every wall. We watch the giants fall. Oh, we cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever let him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We see you break down every we watch the giants fall. Oh, we cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever left him high. With all creation, cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. 
we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what in heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise. We see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Hope you cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. We see you break down every wall. We watch the giants fall. Oh, we cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever let him hide. With all creation, by God, we praise you. We praise you. Yeah, just bring the lift up the love song. Oh, let a melody arise.
your name. Worthy is your name. Yeah, come on, just begin to lift your voice up this evening. Just begin to lift it up. Just, just, just begin to lift your heart's cry. If it's a song, it's a song. If it's a word, it's a word. Even if it's a word, just begin to blurt it out. Just say, you are so faithful, God. You're so good. Oh, we bless your holy name. Oh, we bless your holy name. We join with the angels. Oh, basekira baserie, he basora bas. Ekara baserie. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Oh, pain is gone and mercy fills the street to look upon the one who bled to save and walk with him for all eternity. Just there will be a day when all will bow before him. There will be a day when death is no Standing face to face with He who died and rose again, in holy, holy is the Lord. And every prayer we prayed in desperation. The songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear. And in the end, we'll see that it was worth it when He returns to wipe away our tears. Yes, there will be a day when all will bow before there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again singing holy holy is the lord and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice a thousand generations singing worthy is the lamb who was slain and on that day we join the resurrection Stand beside the heroes of my faith With one voice, a thousand generations Singing worthy is the Lamb who was slain Forever he shall wait oh, So let it be 
today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave singing holy holy is the Lord so let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave singing holy holy is the Lord singing holy holy is the Lord singing holy holy is the Lord let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints, we raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God, who gave us life beyond the grave. Singing, oh, holy is the Lord. Singing, holy, holy is the Lord.
There's nothing better than being in a room where there's wholehearted devotion to Jesus. And if you haven't been able to feel his presence, just stop right now and just breathe in, just breathe in. Let the air of heaven just fill your lungs. Let's just take a deep breath. <sighs> Holy Spirit in and everything else out. Come on. Oh, Lord, we thank you for giving us life and breath. Thank you that we can sing. Thank you that the restrictions are lifting tomorrow and that we are going to be able to sing wholeheartedly. Not that we don't now with our hearts, but Lord, you deserve the loudest praise. You are so worthy. You are so worthy. Um, I've asked Sybil to just continue to um, just minister um, I heard the Lord's heart this morning. Um, Ramesh asked me if I could uh, host communion. And I heard the Holy Spirit say that he wants us to know that, that taking, communion, taking communion is a salvation step. It's saying that we're part of him and that it matters when we take communion, we're receiving forgiveness for ourselves, but we're also releasing forgiveness to others. It is the salvation message, and I love it. And, um, and he gave me Psalm 16, and I'm going to speak it out over us as a declaration. And it starts out, Psalm 16, 1, it says, Keep me safe, my God, for in you t I take refuge. And he said, we have this expression that when we give our lives to Christ, that we're saved. What does saved mean? Let's unpack it a little bit. Keep me safe. Keep me saved, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. When we give our hearts to him, we're saying, you are Lord. I'm no longer sitting on the throne of my life. I give you that. I want to be one of your children and be led by you. And apart from you, I have no good thing. You know, there's a turning point in our lives where we come to that place and we realize that nothing makes a whole lot of sense without his lordship, without his peace flowing through us. And, and in this place, especially as we take communion, I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. I hear the Lord saying that over us today, that we're his bride and when we take communion, we're stepping into that place and acknowledging that he is the one that we have given our hearts to. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. We know that from our own experience. But also, um, there's, it's like getting a divorce from all the other gods that we've served. And we come to that, that place and, and there's a boundary line there. And we say, I will worship you alone. Verse 5, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. I just want us to take the bread this morning. This is our portion. He provided his own body. He, be, he became our portion and he will continue to be the living bread that sustains us and nourishes us. And so we honor you, beautiful Lord Jesus, this morning. Let's partake. We are part of your body. And it goes on to say, Lord, you are my portion and my cup. You are my portion and my cup. Whew. He poured out his blood for us so that we didn't have to take that punishment. 
And when we, we partake of the cup, we're saying, no more punishment for us. No more punishment. Wow. No more punishment. You make my lot secure. Wow. It says, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. He is our inheritance and we are his. He, we are his future. Think about that. This is, a, this is a working relationship, guys. This is awesome. Let's drink to him this morning. He's our portion in our cup. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. Verse 8, I keep my eyes always on the Lord, and with him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Let's lean back in him today. Let us find that place of safety and refuge and salvation. In, the, in my margin in my Bible, I wrote, staring at Jesus keeps me safe and secure. Somebody needs to hear that today. Keeping your eyes on him isn't a religious activity. But looking at him, marveling at him, experiencing his nature, his gentleness, his patience, his kindness, and being pulled into that gorgeous vortex of his love. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Guys, we have an amazing future, whether it's here or with him permanently. We are being made safe as we put our trust in him. This is his promise, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life, and you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. It's the Lord's heart this morning that you don't wait until you go to heaven to experience this, although you're going to have an eternity of living in his embrace and his joy and his pleasure and all the things that he's got planned for us. But this morning, someone needs to hear this. This afternoon, someone needs to hear this, that he doesn't want you to miss him. He wants to make you safe today. He wants you saved. And mostly from yourself, yes. But he is the one who will help you with that. And making him Lord of your life, surrendering and yielding to him, and learning what that feels like. He wants to grow you and pull you close to himself. And so, Lord, if there's anyone here this morning um, or listening online, whatever time you tune in, just allow Holy Spirit to rest on you and, and let us know uh, how you encounter him because I believe it's his desire to pull you close and give you peace and a whole lot more. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sybil. Oh, that was really beautiful this morning. I, I had to look up because I thought you had somebody singing with you. I think there are angels in here that just want to get in on everything. Come on up, darling. I noticed that Sybil uh, kind of dressed up today, love. He put on nice shoes. He even brushed his hair. <laughs> Shiny face, nice shirt. Come on. Hey, everybody. Hey. That's right. He's getting dedicated as well. <laughs> everybody, listen, everybody, tomorrow is uh, Sybil's birthday. Come on. So during the course of the, of the, of the uh, event, during the course of the service, why don't you at some point just grab him and lay hands on him and pray for him and just bless him. He's been... Uh, for us, he's been such a blessing to Elsie and to me ever since uh, he and Michelle have been with us. He's been such a wonderful, kind-hearted, servant-oriented, Jesus-lover 
that uh, he's been a real blessing. So thank you, Sybil, for doing that, for being that. Yeah, give him, you know, give him a Pentecostal handshake if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, clap, clap, but also give him a Pentecostal handshake. You know what I'm talking about? You slip some money into your hand and just bless the brother. Come on, bless him at some point. He's an amazing, has he not been a blessing to you? Yeah. And he's turning 40, 4-0, everybody. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so... Today is, as we said in this, at the beginning, this is the, uh, our baby dedication service. And this is great because in our stream, we don't uh, baptize babies because we believe in believer's baptism. We believe you need to understand what you're doing when you, when you get baptized. And so babies don't, at that stage of their lives, have the capacity to understand. But we do believe in dedicating babies. We believe that the parents and the families and friends who, uh, are there families, uh, are there extra family and friends with us today? A few people probably? Yeah, okay, so in a few minutes we'll call everybody forward. But we do want to take a, just a minute. I want to give a charge because really this is a bit of a trick. It's not, just, it's not just dedicating the babies, okay? It's actually giving a charge to the parents as well to be good and awesome parents. You know, Hannah, somebody would remember in the Old Testament, in the book of uh, Samuel, Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel, Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, she actually brought, after she had been crying out to God for so long to have a baby, she eventually had a baby, and she brought the baby and dedicated that baby to the Lord. Remember that story? And then, of course, most of you would also know that when Jesus was born, our Savior, when he was born, his mother and father, Joseph, his uh, earthly father, Joseph, and his mother brought him to the, temple on, to, to the temple on the eighth day and dedicated him as well. So this is a very biblical thing that we're, that we're doing. And so let me just read Deuteronomy 6. Parents of those, who, of those babies who are being dedicated, listen up. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9 says this. Hear, O Israel... Hear, oh, love more and Mary, Alex and Vivian, uh, who else? Uh, Roshan and Ashwini, one more, Sybil and Michelle. Hear, my people, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commands that I give you today are to be in your hearts. Impress them on your children, impress them on your children. Not don't force. It that doesn't mean force them or, or or coerce them necessarily, but impress them by the way that you live your life, right? Impress them. Impress your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk around the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Uh, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Now, that's Old Testament stuff. You can do that if you want to, but make sure it's also written across your heart. The command to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and to love everybody else with that same kind of love. That's the, that's the biggest command that the Lord is giving to us. Love the Lord, and you do that not only by, by teaching your children or telling your children, but, but you do it by example, don't you? Because the truth of the matter is you only reproduce what you are, not what you say. You reproduce in your children and those you get in, that, that you have influence over, you reproduce uh, what you are and not what you say. Amen? Who said good? Come on. Make some noise, everybody. Be careful how you respond to offenses with family members or church relationships, friends. Your kids are watching. Your kids are watching. And they are sensitive and they pick up what's in the atmosphere. Let every aspect of your life be saturated with what I'm calling godness. I was trying to find a better word, but godness. 
Let every aspect of your life, not just your church life on Sunday mornings or Sunday afternoons, but every aspect of your life, when you're at home, when you're, when you're uh, having uh, heated discussions with your spouse, make sure even then your life is saturated with godness because then there's lots of forgiveness, lots of apology, lots of confession, and a lot of good stuff. You are meant to disciple your children, friends. You are meant to disciple. You are meant to disciple your children. Sunday school is great, but Sunday school can never take the place of you investing in your own children and you, de- you, you dedicating and directing your children. Amen? Amen. All right, so let's have the uh, four families come forward, and we'll have them across the front with the babies. And if we have some of our leaders with us, we'll, you, you come as well. And uh, I will give them a charge, and then we'll, we'll lay hands on them and then pray for them and uh, bless these kids. This is exciting, guys. The, these kids are the future. You know, they could be influential leaders in society in the years to come. Don't you agree? Yes. Wow. Love more and Mary. Love more and Mary and Eliana. Roshan and Ashwini and Tahila. Sibla, Michelle and Mark. He can't be left out. <laughs> Alex and Vivian with Matthias. <laughs> so, parents and parents of the children, here's my charge. Or here's, here's, my rec- here's my question to you. So that your child may walk in the abundant life that Christ offers, do you intend to, with God's help, provide your child a Christian home of love and peace to raise them in a godly manner, teaching them to love the Lord their God with all their heart and soul and strength and to encourage them to trust in Jesus as Lord? Amen. All right, so let's... uh, Let's lay hands on these guys, those who are close by. You want to pray over them? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for this amazing little family. And Father, we just thank you for Tehila. We thank you, Lord, that your hand is on her to bless her and to prosper her. Lord, let your favor rest on her. I I keep seeing this whenever I'm around her, that there's a psalmist anointing on her, that she is a worshiper, that she will grow in song. Even if it isn't in tune, it'll be very beautiful by the time it gets to heaven. It's true. It's true. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And it will be in tune. Lord, I thank you that you have set your hand on this child. I see uh, Tehila with a single-minded heart for the Lord. I just see her just with a directness that her eyes are like flint upon the Lord. Wow. And I just, um, I just speak your blessing over her, Father God. And I just, again, I see that shepherdess in her, that um, just in the fields and just with her heart and her mind directed towards the one and the one and only. And I just speak that, um, that blessing over her, that her heart is, is one-hearted with Jesus. Yeah, Mark. 
Lord, we just bless Mark. We just thank you for him. We thank you for his life. Lord, I ask that he would be so full of your love, of your grace, of your peace. Lord, we thank you for the fire that burns on the inside of him, of him already. Lord, I pray that he would grow into a wonderful, wonderful man of God, man of influence to make an impact for the people around him, for your name. Bless him, Jesus. Lord, thank you that he will be a loyal friend mm -hmm. and that he will be a giver of grace. Lord, raise him up with a fire in his belly to defend those who cannot defend themselves. We bless you, Mark, with such an amazing anointing to take your generation for Jesus. Amen. Okay. I see um, light going up straight up. So he has the high praise of God in his heart, and he releases it into heavenly places. And I thank you, Lord, for the promises that you have over this child already, and that there's a, a heart of a, a worshiper in him. I bless it. I bless him, Lord. And I thank you for the love that he exudes, um, the softness of his heart towards you, Lord. Thank you for the purity of heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Next person. I'm seeing a boldness in Mark, an unorthodox praise and worship little guy that will uh, will break out of the mold of uh, <laughs> what we expect. And I bless you, I bless you, little Mark, that you will be you will uh, be able to to impart this. That it will just be um, contagious. You're you're unorthodox and and just like as David <laughs> danced. <laughs> <laughs> that Mark, you will be, you'll be, uh, you'll be a, a wonderful blessing and stepping out of the box kind of guy. In Jesus' name. Yeah, pretty well. What she says is the same thing. I'm saying, Father God, that He's one that's going to draw people to go wherever He goes. Father God, He's going to be people are going to be drawn to You because of His activity. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm just going to bless Mateus. Father, I just thank you for this little guy. I thank you that he uh, is only a little guy in body, but in his spirit, man, he is big. And Lord, we just ask that your hand would be on him with protection, that he would grow, um, that he would carry the gospel. Lord, that there would be uh, words that you put on his mouth. I bless him with the prophetic uh, with a mantle of Elijah, Lord, that he would uh, speak things out. He would declare things and see them uh, come to pass. Lord, even though he is young, Lord, uh, cause him uh, to walk with such humility and authority that uh, people will listen even as he's a child in Jesus' name. Yeah, I just... Um I just see tremendous authority on him. And just to add to what uh, Pastor Elsie was saying, just um, such a th authority on his voice. And I even, I just saw in the spirit, just a little crown and that crown growing with him. So we just, uh, we just bless that authority, that God-given authority at every stage in his life, whether that's on the playground, whether that's in daycare, whether that's junior high, high school, university, uh, wherever you're going to take him, Father, we just bless that and we thank you. Thank you for that gift and that fire that you have placed in him right now. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, I thank you for Eliana. I thank you for this family, for Love More and Mary. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you that Eliana will be strong and bold in the Lord. You've given her a strong will. And, and I just see pieces of the puzzle. She's throwing them all over the room. And uh, nothing makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but I, I feel like the Lord uh, is pleased um, with the way that he shaped Eliana, that he is going to make all the pieces fit together in the most unusual places, and that she will carry the gospel where no one else could. And I also see a song on her throat. I see the song of the Lord that she'll break out into spontaneity in every di di every direction, whether it's artwork or even being dramatic. 
uh, but being bold uh, with colors and forms. And we just bless you with a creativity in word, in speech, and in your life. And um, I also bless you uh, to be hungry, to be led by Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, I saw her being an intercessor, like interceding for many nations. And Mary, that's also your heart, that you intercede. And I see that you're passing on to her while you're even, um, when she was in her, her your womb you were you've been interceding for many people and that has been passed on to her so I just pray Holy Spirit that she will walk into nations Father God not only intercede but she will walk into nations and bring salvation to many people daddy so I just thank you for Eliana for the bold strong woman that you have called her to be father fill her up Holy Spirit even at such a young age let her hear your whole hear you Holy Spirit and know what to pray for what to say at times Father God and I thank you God for this woman that is going to be um, bringing many women out of uh, so much danger Father God and filling her, fill her up with your love so she can just overflow with your love to many woman father god so we just thank you for eliana and thank you for the mom as well father god for giving her the strength to raise her the way that you have called her to be father and the dad as well in jesus mighty name amen thank you so much holy spirit thank you lord jesus thank you for telling us just how much you love children thank you lord we bless each and every one of you and lord we take our own charge as a community today that uh, we take care of each other, we take care of each other's children, Lord, that, that you're knitting our hearts together with their lives, and we call forth that next generation, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Well, I would think that all of us are in agreement that we need a building of our own. And we're going to be praying that today. Um, but I want you to do something, and it might seem very childlike, but that's what this is about today. It's, it's about children coming before the Father. And I want you just to settle in your own spirit for a minute or two. And ask the Lord what's in his heart. And... And Lord, we just pray that you would open our spirit, eyes, and ears, right on our imagination, those things that you want us to declare. And as you are uh, believing God, uh, see first. Children see, and they believe. And so, Lord, we ask that you would open yes. our eyes and that you would write on our hearts location, the the shape of the the locate the building, um, what's on the inside of the building. Lord, you know what's in your heart. Will you download these things to us so that we can be praying accurately and that we can stay in pace with you, that we will be led by you in finding that place. And Lord, um, I just I just also want to charge every one of you that this isn't the pastor's job that this is all of us together leaning into God's heart to find out what he wants us to do because he's going to bring us together on, onto the same page. He wants us to experience his leading and guiding and provision and celebrate together. In Jesus' name, amen. We call in that new building. We call in that new place. And, and personally... Uh, Begin to declare those things that you've seen, and we will all have a big celebration. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you, love. Okay, everybody, it's, uh, I'm going to take probably 15, 20 minutes to share um, the word that I feel I want to share with you guys. It's more of an, an exhortation and encouragement um, as we, as things open up, as uh, there's more and more freedom to meet with, uh, without restrictions. I want to take some time to encourage us to make sure we're actually doing that. Okay? But first, were you guys blessed by Bruno's ministry last 
week, or actually this morning. I watched it this morning again, um, and I was so blessed. Such a cool guy. I just like that guy so much. Uh, he's actually coming back on May 1st. I've asked him to do another part of his uh, talk on the double portion anointing. So he's coming back on May 1st. I loved how he talked about, uh, you know, thinking like a king. Thinking like a king. In his book, the title of his chapter was uh, Thinking Big. But I like the idea of think, thinking. Get it? Thinking. Thinking like a king. Because that's really who we are in Christ, are we not? If we can only grab it. But he was saying, that, and he also said that you, he made the reference to Jesus saying, you ask, you have not because you ask not. And that's in, in my case, that's so true because sometimes I feel, man, I'm not worthy to ask God for, you know, big things, right? I mean, that's for somebody else. That's for Elsie. She's, a, she's the holy one in the family. Maybe Ian, okay, he, you know, he's a, he's a, He's been around the block a few times. You know, God loves him more than anybody else, you know. So maybe, but not me, right? Not me. I'm just a, or, or maybe the, the flip side of that sometimes is I try to be, you know, I try to be humble. I, you know, God just called me to this. So all I need is this, right? Whereas the, in reality, we have been given a great inheritance, everybody. A great inheritance, I was going to preach on inheritance today, but I'll save it for next week. Yeah, so we have, uh, we have put, if you don't know yet, we have put our Wednesday night uh, church online on pause for the foreseeable future. Future. And, uh, yes, I was tapping into my English roots. What English roots? In our, in our leaders' meeting yesterday, we had a leaders' meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, by the way, if you're visiting, you're not, you're not aware of how we work. We actually are very much involved in raising up leaders. We're all about, we're, we're, we are an apostolically led church. We're led by the gift of the apostolic, which basically means that we, the, the three emphases that we emphasize are... First of all, we want to connect or gather people, obviously. Every church wants to grow, wants to gather people. We want to gather people. We want to connect people, make sure that they feel part of a safe family, a healthy, reasonably healthy, growing family. We want to connect people. We want to equip people, right, based on Ephesians 4, 11 and following, that the, the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, those five offices in the body of Christ are meant not to do all the work, but the primary function of those offices based on Ephesians 4.11 is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. So we're all about trying to equip people to be their, who, who they're meant to be uh, based on, on the giftings and personalities and everything else that God has placed in them. And then the, the third area is releasing people. We used to say sending Sending, but we've changed that to uh, releasing because the impression is when you say you're sending people, uh, it may, we may create the wrong impression that we want people to end up going to Timbuktu. Please don't send me to Africa. There, you know, that used to be a song way back in the 70s, I think. But uh, we're not, if, if that's where God's calling you, yes, we bless you to go. But we're actually we're talking about releasing you into your calling, into your gifting, into your into your vocation, everybody, your vocation. Okay. So uh, at our meeting yesterday, I asked I asked our friends, our leaders, especially those who were leading small groups, who have been leading, leading small groups for a while. I asked them this question: What? would you say is a benefit or benefits for you uh, in being part of a small group and actually leading a small group? And we got some very interesting uh, answers, interesting responses. And I wanted to ask Jennifer just to come up for a second or two, a minute or two, to share with us what she shared with us yesterday. 
because I want us to be encouraged by how God has been using this young lady in such a wonderful way. Hello, everybody. So, honestly, everybody had such amazing responses, yeah. and I'll give you a couple of mine, but um, as I said, there were so many different ones, and every single one that I heard, I totally agreed with. So I think it's like a commonality with everybody in terms of what they experience, and it's all positive things. So one thing is um, getting to use your gifts. So um, we all have different gifts, but I feel like the Lord brings forth um, the use of our individual gifts when we're in those groups. So whether it be prophetic or um, interceding for people or whatever it may be, um, administrative, it could be any of those things, but the Lord will use you in that way when you... um, when you're in that ministry. So it is a blessing because, especially during the time of COVID, we don't really have much opportunity to use our gifts, I find, with the church being closed and we're limited in who we're seeing. But this is still an opportunity for us to use those gifts. And along the line of the gifts as well is I've discovered new gifts within myself that are in talents that I knew or didn't know that I had. And I think Sybil had mentioned yesterday um, facilitating, and that is something that I wasn't really aware uh, that I had, and someone actually mentioned it to me and called it out to me and said, you know, you have that gifting, and I wasn't even aware of that, but I wouldn't have known that unless I was in that role and uh, in that leadership position. So, and I do take a great joy in doing that too. It's something that I find uh, great satisfaction in. So those are two things. Um, And one more thing I was going to say, and this is like very, very important, is just getting to know people better and on a deeper level. And, you know, you know, we meet here as a group and even in the larger church or whatever, but, and we spend a little bit of time with each other, but until we get to know each other one-on-one and even in the small groups and sharing, um, it's just, you get to know on such a deeper level. Like, now Valley May, I have to say, I have I feel like I've known her forever, so I can't even remember a time that I didn't know her, but I remember a time with Shalane, where, there, she's looking at me now. Um, <laughs> Shalane, I remember looking at the back of your head, seeing you in front of me all the time, and wondering about you, who you were, what you, you know, what kind of person you were. I just saw little bits, and I got to know little bits of you, but it wasn't till. Shalane joined my group that I got to know her so much better and saw what an amazing, amazing woman she is. Um, And yeah, the giftings that she has and and just watching her grow and not just Shalane too, there's just, uh, you know, all the women in my group that I've just seen grow and just being vulnerable with one another. You don't see that in a larger situation. You only see that in a smaller group. So I just you know, encourage everybody if you're not in a group right now to to get in one because really I feel like what draws me to the church is, you know, 30% of what we're here, you know, doing here, but 70% of where I feel connected is as part of that uh, small group. Okay? Brilliant. My gosh. I remember when Jennifer was even afraid to touch the microphone. Now she doesn't want to, she wants to not stop. I said one minute. She says, okay, give me 10 minutes. Wow. That's Shalane. Shalane, the back of her head is nice, but the front of her face is even nicer, I tell you. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, everybody. I'm leaving Colossians behind just for today. Hebrews chapter 10. I'm going to read from verse 19 to 25. But I'm going to focus on the second half of this for our short little conversation here. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can, bo- we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Come on, everybody, for the blood of Jesus. One of the things I love about, about the book of he- the letter to the Hebrews is that the writer, who is, we don't know who it is, it doesn't say who it is, but we can safely assume that it was a Jewish person who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And so when he's writing this, this letter to the Hebrews who were spread around, uh, his major focus was to help them clarify that there was an old covenant that God made with a specific people called the Jewish people. 
in a specific time, but now in Jesus, there's a new covenant that he's made for, with the entire world, whoever, whomsoever wants to believe, all right? And he's, he's making the point over and over again from beginning chapter one all the way to the very end. He's making the point that those two covenants are different. And so he says, uh, so, in, so the backdrop is, uh, uh, he says, by his death, or in his flesh, is the literal translation, in his sarks. By his death, Jesus opened a new, and everybody say new. A new, not like it's a new model, it's a totally different new altogether, okay? It's not going from Toyota Corolla to a Toyota Camry, okay? It's going from a Toyota to a SpaceX rocket. It's a totally new deal altogether. A new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules, who rules over God's house, let us, go, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. Fully trusting who? Jesus. Not ourselves, not our good works, not our nice Sunday, Sunday afternoon behavior in church. That's trust. We're trusting in him. We're trusting in Jesus and what he's accomplished. And, and again, the backdrop is that in the old covenant, most of you would know this, that the, the priest, the high priest, was only allowed to go into the temple, into the most holy of holies, the, the inner sanctum, once a year. And he had to be squeaky clean. He had to be, he had to be, you know, he had to do his own oblations, his own sacrifices to make sure that he was ready. And then, and then his garments, as most of you would know, had uh, pomegranates and bells around his, his garment. And I can't find this in the Bible, uh, but I've heard it said on many occasions from one preach to the next, because we copy each other. But anyway, I heard, um, I heard it being said that on that day, on Yom Kippur, when he goes into the most holy of holies, the place where the Ark of the Covenant was, um, that he had to, they had to tie a rope to his foot. I mean, maybe that's true, but it's not in the Bible, okay? So that doesn't mean it's not true. Um, it just means it's not in the Bible. Um, so then the point is that if, if God didn't receive him and he fell dead... The people outside, once they, once they stopped hearing the bells around his f foot, his uh, garments, they would pull him out. Okay? So that is the backdrop to this writer saying this amazing statement. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting in him. We can go, we can go fully confidently into God's presence. Do you understand how radical that is, everybody? This is not a different God, okay? It's the same God. It's the same God. It's just a different way of relating to him because of what Jesus has done. The, the human beings haven't changed. We're still messed up. The Jews were messed up. We are messed up. Okay, we're all broken people. The difference is that God in his great mercy, God in his great grace, God in his infinite, immeasurable love for us has decided to make a way for you and me to be reconnected to him, to come into his presence every single day, not just once a year, but every single day we can, be, we can come right into his presence with full confidence. I didn't even plan on saying any of this, but there you go. Let's go to uh, chapter, I mean the next, uh, pa the next section. So therefore, in light of what Jesus has done, here's what he's saying now. Here's what the writer is saying. In light of what, we just, what I just shared with you, let us hold, this is a lettuce sandwich, everybody. It's a lettuce salad. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. What promise is he, is, he, is he able to keep? The promise is that we can come into his presence if we're covered in the blood of Jesus. 
Amen? And there's a, an, 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 an inheritance for each and every one of us. We, are, we become co-heirs with Christ. Second, let us, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. So the first thing is a God word thing. Uh, let's hold on to the hope in, that, we, that we find in Jesus. The second thing is let us together motivate one another to acts of love and good service. The third thing is, and let us not neglect, not neglect, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, uh, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Even 2,000 years ago, the writer of the Hebrews was thinking Jesus was coming back tomorrow. Well, I don't know if he's coming back tomorrow, but I know that he's coming back and he's already here, but he's coming back in a fresh outpouring of his spirit because we've heard so many prophetic words that Jesus is about to do something glorious. And a bunch of us were at the, uh, at the church, at the airport church on Friday night, and the place just blew up, man. It was amazing. Holy Spirit was so pre- present. It just, keep, it just keeps stirring in our hearts a hunger for more of Jesus. So, here's what I want to say very simply to us, especially now as the restrictions are lifting. We've had two, and a half, two years or so of a hiatus, right? We can sit on our... Guys, if you come to my house, you'll see something very interesting. I have a couch, okay? We have a couch. And there is an indentation in the couch that perfectly fits my posterior end. Because I've sat on in that spot for two years. Two years. Day in, day out. Sweet mercy of Jesus. Okay. So that's behind us now. And we're going into a new era. A new season. And what I want to do is encourage us that let us not fall back or fall into the uh, thinking that we could just stay at home and watch the service online. Everybody who's watching online, you can watch online, but also come to church. Come to this place, people. Come to this place. This is where we get to lay hands on each other. What we've missed for the last two and a half years is we haven't missed great teaching because we can flick on the internet and we can listen to our most favorite preacher, whether it's T.D. Jakes or Bill Johnson or whoever it is, and they can give you their their favorite topic. So you can Google T.D. Jakes on uh, woman thou be loosed or something like that, or Bill Johnson on hosting his presence or whatever. You can, you can, you can, the smorgasbord is there and you've been enjoying it for the last two years and even prior to that. So that hasn't changed and that will not change. That, that, that's the world we're living in now. Or worship. You can turn on and you can flick on to Catch a Fire Toronto East. You can listen to Sybil and Roshan and the others. We don't have any more other people anymore. Wow. Help us, Jesus. Or, you, you know, whatever. Elevation Church. You can do all that stuff, okay? But what you cannot do is you cannot impart the anointing by physical the tactile touch, the, the touching of each other, the laying on of hands, the receiving and the impartation and the giving, that has not been able to happen. We've not been able to do it effectively for the last two years. So that those two years are over. All right? We're into a new era. So people online, people in the room, this is where the action is. Part and parcel of you... Uh, being a follower of Jesus. And by the way, the motivation, well, let me hold that thought for a second or two. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Let us not neglect our meeting together. Let us not neglect our meeting together. I also want to talk briefly about not just Sunday mornings or, or Sunday service, but the value and the power and the blessing of, of being part of a smaller group. This is a church that values highly, 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 and I'm going to say it until you roll the, your eyes onto the back of your head. 
we value very, very much small group connections. I do, because I've been changed by small group ministry. I, I, all my life, by the way, Eng, who's not here today, but he shared on the, on the thing yesterday, he said when he was a missionary, and I so resonated with this, he says when he was a missionary for 20-something years in Asia, one of the things that kept him going was that he had a group of men that he met with on a regular basis and they could share their concerns, their trials. Nobody was necessarily giving advice as men normally want to do, but, um, but they were talking, they were sharing their concerns and praying together and they were just hanging out and, and helping each other by encouraging each other. He says that's the one of the main things that kept him going. And I know their story. I've known them for 25, for 30 something years. I know their story of the challenges they've, they've gone through uh, on the mission field. What did I bring all that up for? Small groups, yeah. So meeting together in small groups is such a very vital thing, everybody. It really, really is. You just heard uh, um, um, Jennifer, yeah. You know, in Acts chapter, Acts, when we look back, we, it, hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty vision, isn't it? So Acts chapter, Acts twenty twenty says this. This is Paul on his way to Rome, um, where he was going to spend the last remaining years of his life uh, before he was uh, beheaded. Um, there in Rome. He's on the way to Rome and he meets with the elders of the Ephesian church. You remember, if you know the story in Acts 19, he, uh, he, spent, uh, he spent at least two years in Ephesus preaching the gospel and a great church was established. He says, I never, he says, I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear either publicly or in your homes. Other translations say from house to house. Paul's, Paul's method of church planting was, was exactly that. He would go to public places, to synagogues first, and when they kicked him out of the synagogues, he would go to another public area where, where the Gentiles would be, and then he would preach to them, and then he would end up going to people's homes to, share, to, to tell them what they needed to hear. Right? There's lots of evidence of him doing that all the way through the New Testament. Not just him, but others as well. So again, meeting together is such a vital thing for us to do. And it's not just a social gathering. Meeting in homes, yeah, we, we have friends, okay? I, w I want to make a slight distinction between just having friendships with people, which is obviously fantastic, but, but meeting together to do church stuff. There's a distinction. Okay? What Paul was doing and what the, what the church was doing in those days has been doing for, for, for two millennia and even to today. Some of you have seen the, the people on, in Ukraine meeting in subways and in people's basements to have a church together. Uh, uh, a couple of things from Acts chapter 2, verse, uh, verses 42 and following, that, that summary section, it talks about the, the, the picture of the church was that there was leadership. They listened to the apostles' teaching. There was leadership. I don't have time to go into an explanation of why I think for there to be church, authentic church, there has to be leadership. Somebody's got to be leading. That's what Paul did. Wherever he went, wherever he went to plant a church, he would spend a couple of days or a couple of weeks or a couple of years, depending on where it was. But everywhere he went, he appointed elders. He would go to a place, he would preach in, in, in Derby for a couple of days or a week or so. He would appoint elders and then move on. You cannot have church, three guys, three good buddies, three good Christian buddies driving in a car. That is not church, everybody. That is not church. That's three guys driving a car having a good time. If you want to have church, you got to have leadership. You got to have instruction. You got to have prayer. You got to have worship. You got to have fellowship. You got to have growth. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 48. Moving right along. 
I want to quickly mention a couple of blessings of small groups. I've already exceeded the time I've set for myself. Blessings of small groups. Uh, um, Jennifer has already mentioned the development of our gifts and callings. I'm not going to take the time to tell you how I discovered people think that I have a pastoral gifting. <laughs> but it was in the context of, of small group. Anyway, you know, developing your giftings and your callings. But even beyond that, your character. Listen, everybody, you can, you can listen to the best speaker on speaking a fantastic message on the virtues of love, right? You can, you can have the best teaching. You can have somebody do a great exegesis of the word agape or phileo, and they can you know, give you a good, fantastic bit of teaching on what the word love is and how important it is for, love, for us to love each other. But unless you place yourself in, an oppor- uh, in, a, in a location where you have to exercise the love muscle, you will, love will not become part of who you are. Do you understand what I'm saying? Likewise with patience or with any of the fruit of the Spirit. Kindness. I'm growing in kindness, everybody. Have you noticed? <laughs> Thank you, Ian. At least Ian feels it. Practicing body ministry. It's already been mentioned. The fact that we, it's not just one person, right? One person is leading or or a couple are leading. There's somebody leading, whatever that looks like. But everybody gets to to do uh, something. They get to, to, to practice their gifts. Like whether it's the prophetic or whether it's service. Or, or whatever it may be, whatever gifting you, f- you feel instinctively uh, coming out of you, you get to practice that in body ministry in a small group like you, like you wouldn't be able to do in this kind of context. Does that make sense? Spiritual and social and material needs are met. I, I'm going to share the story again. I wouldn't mention the name, but... but uh, before we started this church, we had our Elsie and I had our own small group, and we had a you know a bunch of people there, and our, one of our one of the people in the group, she was going through a hard time. She had lost her job, she couldn't make the rent, and I still remember to this day, even though it's a long time ago, somebody else in the group says, "Why don't we take up an offering to cover her rent?" And we did that. If, if memory serves, we did at least twice for her. That would never have happened if she wasn't part of a small group, I don't think. Right? It was because she was part of a small group and she was able to share her heart, share her struggles, share her vulnerabilities, that other people who had the gift of compassion and the gift of giving and generosity, they were able to help her. And she's doing fine now. This is only theoretical in our case, but there's another great value of having small groups, and that is that uh, it's a place for new believers, people who are new to the faith, who would have, who would, the, the gap would be a bit too wide for them to come to a church service right off the bat. Well, hopefully they, they'll connect to you because of friendship, they can connect in a small group and grow there. Amen? So that's my encouragement to us, friends. And here's what I'm, I'm saying. Come to church on Sundays and, come and connect to a small group. Physically connecting to a small group. I'm not saying you have to be there. You, know, you can do a hybrid. We're talking about hybrids where we do stuff online because we're living in 2022, so we do stuff online, but also make sure that there's opportunity to connect tactilely, contact, physical contact with each other. Amen? I don't do it because I'm saying it or because this is a value of our church. Do it because of what Hebrews 10 says, because of what Jesus has done for us, right? 
Because, of, because Jesus has made the way. He's made access for us into the most holy of holies. Unfettered access. Unlimited access. We can come into the presence of, of our loving Savior and Father and God. And then he goes on to say, because of that, what, because of what Jesus has done, let us hold on firmly to our hope. Let us motivate each other. Let us not neglect meeting together. Let that be the motivation for you wanting to be part of church. Because of what Jesus has done for us. Amen? All right, so bless you all. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you during the week. By the way, just one more thought about that. Elsie and I have agreed that... So Wednesdays are are off the table for the time being, the Wednesday church service. So we're going to be giving more of our time to actually having small group meetings. We're going to, be, we're going to pretend we're Paul, and we're going to do the public thing here, but we're also going to meet in homes, and we're going to go to people's homes, and Kayan will help us arrange that, and we'll have small meetings of you know, five, ten people where we get to pray for you, bless you, do some... Uh, uh, um, Holy Spirit stuff, and that's going to be awesome. All right? Love, you want to come up? Yeah. <sighs> Let's all stand, shall we? Shikaramba. Let me you want to go first. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wow, Father God. You paid a high price for us to become a family. Thank you for giving us ears to hear you today. Wow. Lord, I just ask that you would knit us together in really fantastic ways in this next season. Lord, that we'd be locked on, locked on to you, locked on to each other, unbreakable bonds. And Lord, we are asking that you will build your church the way that you have wanted to. You know, there's been a, um, a sifting of our hearts over these last few months. I don't think the Lord is going to just let us take it easy or do it the easy way anymore. There's a price to pay for loving one another and moving closer together. And Lord, we ask that even now you give us uh, such a hunger for, for relationships that have permanency and destiny to them. Even now, Lord, give us a hunger for what's in your heart. In Jesus' name. We've been talking a lot about the anointing for the last little while, and Bruno, Bruno did that as well. So what I want to do, what I felt to do is to pray uh, Isaiah chapter 11, first couple of verses over you, uh, Isaiah 11. So if you, it's, it's about the Spirit of the Lord resting on us. Resting on Jesus, obviously, but we're in Christ, therefore it's, the Spirit is resting on us as well. And so if you want to receive even more, more Lord, there's always more. So just posture your heart for the Spirit of God to come and to minister to you. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on you. The Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and you will delight in the fear of the Lord. So Holy Spirit, we ask that this would come, this would be the case for each and every one of us. If you need wisdom for the circumstances of your life, you got decisions to make, choices to make, Lord, let your, let your spirit of wisdom rest on us. Give them clear understanding. Lord, let them have a real sense 
of being led by your spirit. Give them counsel, Father, if they've got people and relationships around them that need insight and input from you. Would you let them be the conduits of your counsel, of your heavenly wisdom coming through them? Spirit of power, come, Lord God. Manifest your glory in the release of your power. Lord, let's see signs and wonders and miracles increasing in our midst. Use our hands, God. Use our hands. Use our little faith to glorify your great name. Well, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We, we desire to know you more, living God. Our deepest desire is to, be, is to have a greater... Like Moses, Moses Mo, I know your ways... I've seen your works. Lord, show me your glory. Show me what makes your heart tick. Show me what moves you, living God. I want to be more like you. Show me more of of your heart, Lord God. Create in me a desire, a deeper desire for intimacy with you. Let it come upon us. Let that descend on us. Let that increase in our hearts, in our lives. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for everything he's done for us. We thank you for this rich and glorious inheritance that we have because of what Jesus has made possible for us. We want to enter into it as fully as we possibly can. We want to think your thoughts after you. We want to think your thoughts about us after you. We want to think your thoughts about you and about the world and our place in it. Come Holy Spirit. We're so heavenly dependent and reliant on you. In Jesus' name. Yeah. I heard the Holy Spirit say that there's someone either watching or you're here. And you say, I, I feel like I don't fit in. I don't belong. And the Lord says you feel like a piece of puzzle. A piece of a puzzle that has been lost under the couch somewhere. And he says, but I know where you are, and I have the most amazing place for you that you will fit in and you will belong because there's nothing more uh, disturbing than having a, a puzzle and then having a few pieces missing. He says, you're that piece for somebody who's been waiting for you. And position yourself. Position yourself. Stay open. I'm going to plug you in. And so we just bless each and every one of you. We bless each and every one of you to to bring your gifts and all that you are to the table because the Lord has a marvelous masterpiece to put together. And church is not going to be like it was. Mm. And we want to follow his design because there are people out there who are pieces of the puzzle hidden somewhere and our small groups will find them and so we we ask holy spirit that you believe. join us sunday morning after the stream of the service for a zoom meeting where we just chat and hang out together find the link to this meeting in your emails or at ctftorontoeast.com on the connect during covid Let praise break we also gather together to pray every Let week on thursday night Help us drive the we church with Check your emails or contact the office. We for the worship Zoom. you. Can. Our emails, email newsletter has everything that's happening this week, as well as all the regular info you might be wondering about or looking for, including the links we to all of our emails. Make sure to subscribe at the bottom of any page of our website, and then take a glance through every week on Thursday afternoon so you stay informed about what's going on. Interested in connecting on a personal level? We have pods and connect groups that are a fantastic way to get connected and catch Are you interested in joining one? Send us a note at middleeast.com. You can return your tithes or give offerings to catch the fire Toronto East through a number of different avenues. Texting a gift, church center mobile app, or online, writing a check making an interactive group transfer. 
You can find details for all of those avenues in your emails or of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with you all.